those of the human family of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Deliver us from the death of sin, O God, and raise us up to the newness of life in your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us go and hear the word of God as it's recorded there in the Old Testament, followed by our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Let us hear the word of God. Let me read to you from the 8th Psalm, from the Psalm David wrote, O Lord, our Lord, how precious is your name in all the earth. We have sent your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man, that you visit him. You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And then if I might, let me just jump over to the first verse of the 96th Psalm. As I was reading through that last night, and it, it, it hit me that I just would like to share this one verse with you from the 96th Psalm. And David writes this uh, in this time of glory and coming out of his prayers. He says, O oh, saying, to the Lord a new song. Yes. Saying to the Lord all the earth. Saying to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Then declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all of his peoples. Uh, those are the readings of the word of God. May they be blessed in your heart. And may they be inspiration and hope to your living. These are God's words. Amen.
beautiful warning it is to be in the house of the Lord and to come to the Lord's table. Oh, how gracious we are to have this church and to have this compound to come and sit and pray and sing and to praise the name of the Lord our God. I'd like to draw your attention to our New Testament lesson as it comes out of the letter that Paul wrote to the church of Philippi. And there in the third chapter of Philippians and there in the first verse, we hear these words. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilations, for we are the circumcised who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted, lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all the things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, says the Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And then he goes on and he ends uh, that chapter. For many walk of whom I've told you often and now I tell you are even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things yes. to himself. The reading of the word. Uh, amen. Thanks. And thanks. And thanks be to God. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine.
to get a absentee ballot or a melon ballot, they're the same things. Let your gift to God be that you're going to vote that we will put evil out of the command center in this nation's capital. And that we will not rest even as the weary until this job is done. That this nation will be blessed again. This is Labor Day. So I'd like to tell you something about Labor Day. When we were growing up, my father would, his seven sons and mama, on Labor Day weekend, that Sunday after church, we would travel to a Labor Day picnic. There we were in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Daddy would let us get into our little old shorts and sneakers. And we would head toward Pendleton Pike, Route 67. We'll go past Fort Benjamin Harrison. On our way to Anderson, Indiana. It was about 36 miles east of Indianapolis. And we would go to that annual Labor Day picnic. That outing. Where all of those men who worked for the United States Postal Service, mm -hmm. we would go have that Labor Day out. Yes. And we would do the bag races. Mm. We would play baseball. <laughs> uh, this was the day when uh, women didn't identify that they were lower uh, than the angel, when they would be over there preparing the potato salad and putting the food there on, on the pits. And there was none of that. Uh, they were lower than anybody. All right. They were equal in motherhood. Right. Amen. Amen. And the men were setting things up. Yeah. There'd be a little baseball game going on. Unit. All the little children was running around with their little ices, okay. staining up their shirts. <laughs> but there was something about that Labor Day event yeah. that you could feel the spirit of oneness. There was a unity amongst those yeah. post office workers. All right. Now my father, he worked at the post office for 45 years. He, he, he drove a truck. I, I remember the days when he had to go into a place called Greenfield, Indiana. Made your homes of Ku Klux Klanners. Yeah. I don't understand that. They got problems with Black Lives Matter, but they don't have problems with Ku Klux Klan. I, I don't understand that, church. All right. uh, they put up three Ks, but they can't put up BLM. <laughs> now, we went to that event. Black men, white men, Black women, white women, black children, white children. We went and just played together. Good hung out together. Yes. Everybody won something. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and, 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 and they played music. I mean, we even do a little square dancing bit. <laughs> we were all one. Yes, yes. We were all one. Unified. It was Labor Day. It was postal workers. Mm -hmm. My daddy. Uh, uh, drove into that truck to Greenfield, Indiana. And uh, it was about a, a half a mile uh, driveway to get to that postal building. Mm -hmm. And on several occasions, uh, my father had to drive past uh, automobiles with uh, people standing outside the automobile, men holding up signs that said KKK. Mm -hmm. And they knew he was a black man driving in. There were several times now that he's gone and don't make any difference. Pop would say, uh, I need you to ride with me tonight. My, my dad, when he saw a favor in saying thanks to his son, and you know, every father has a special way of uniting with one son in one way and another son in another way. There was always a way that mothers and fathers showed their love toward their children in different ways. It didn't make them special. <laughs> It didn't create favor, because favor can only come from God, but uh, you knew that uh, they would call on you in a way that was decisive of love. So daddy would say to me, uh, Lee Mac, <laughs> Lee Mac. I knew when daddy would say Lee Mac that uh, there was a privilege, an opportunity of me doing something with my father. You know, today, you see, the, the world needs men, not just a uh, stand up and step up as, as uh, 
people are saying in the movement. Mm -hmm. We've been standing up, stepping up a long time. Yes, sir. Long time. Black men have stepped up, stood up, knocked down, bounced back, and still going forward. And those of you that sound just coming along, you don't know what we've been through. All right, now. You don't know where we've been, and you can't go where we've gone. Because uh, there's something about being raised with a father yes. that makes a difference. Uh, when Jesus got to the point that he needed something, that he was at that low ebb, he went to the father. He went up to the mountain, he spoke to the father. Yes. How dare it would be today if more young men had fathers yes. that they could go speak to mm -hmm. and lift up their hearts with their concerns and their needs and if they can just share their hopes and their desires. Yes, Fathers, that we're losing them too quick. Yes. Fathers. And, and my mother took care of my father without any indemnification. Let me just break that down. My mama waited for daddy to get home to put a plate of food on the table for him. My mother didn't mind ironing his shirts from the laundry man. My mama didn't mind having things ready for daddy to feel comfortable when he got home. Uh, my mother had no problem saying, okay, y'all boys go on now, let daddy watch his shows. See, my mother was uh, equal with my father. And for no other reason, I can tell you one reason, because uh, pop bought that check home and mama knew how to spend it. Equal with daddy working as daddy take care of home. Uh, uh, there was an equal measurement of they was going to raise up their children to be children of God. Yeah. And it took both of them to do it. Now, uh, there, there's this uh, new uh, book coming out. I read about it in the Atlantic uh, magazine about how people are not drawn so much to formal religion anymore as they're uh, uh, growing in the prosperity of things that mean something to them. The interesting new religion, uh, institutions that are being made and agencies that are being created that teach people how to find something comfortable and something they do or something they like without it having any kind of religious motif. So uh, that's like being uh, with Moses going up to the mountain and down uh, below the mountain, they're worshiping uh, an idol. See, the idol right now is that bastard in the White House. People idolize the evil and wrongdoing, killings and murders, being built over the head with billy sticks, being shot seven times when you couldn't even run and they shot you while you weren't even riding. And you, you wonder why uh, all of a sudden this man looks like he can uh, win another term. It's not because of his actions. No, sir. no, no. See, they're speaking in cold now, church. Hear me. I've been around this little subject for a while. I've gained some interest in, I don't, I don't believe in this anti-racism stuff. How can you be against racism and you're racist? <laughs> right. Contradiction. Contradiction. Uh, 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 I want an anti-racism committee in my church. For what? To give new rules? No, here's, here it is. Let me be black as a man like my father. Daddy didn't say much, but when he said it, we heard it. They are doing everything they can to destroy the image of good. Say it, say it, say That's what Paul's talking about right now. He, yeah. he said, I will walk that you might see what good is. Yeah. And, and, and the challenge is, good is in what we do. And what we got to do to be good right now is to vote, yeah. and to vote, and to vote. Because see, here's the issue. They don't have problems with Joe Biden. I remember when George Bush had that old president from Indiana, also vice president, uh, and that boy couldn't read how many fingers he had on his hands. Now they got another one, Pence. And the son that almost makes me ashamed of my state. Who he says. But here's the whole key to it all. You're going to see even white women get 
out here again and vote for Donald Trump. And it ain't gonna have anything to do with their conservative religious beliefs. It's in cold, black America, and you got to vote. See, all they're saying to themselves, if Joe Biden is called home before his term's over, we will not have a black woman telling us what to do. Oh, Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it in the neck case. Y'all better hear what I'm saying? See, they're not so much worried about uh, Trump because he got a white man to take his place. But uh, they're afraid that if Biden wins and the Lord uh, calls him unto glory, how dare us have to be under the servitude of a woman of color? Not just a woman, but a woman of color. I mean, they would have let Hillary Clinton in and she wasn't a woman of color. So you don't think white folks are at home examining the issues at heart? They said uh, it was bad enough when you dealt with a black man. Now you think uh, we're going to have to deal with a black woman? Hear me, church. My father took us to that Labor Day, <laughs> to that Labor Day, out in every year as we grew up. We jumped in the back of that old 1957 station wagon. All right. No air conditioning. Yeah. And we went and we had a good time. You remember how parents used to say, and you're going to go and you're going to have a good time and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> you used to be that way with church. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to Sunday school whether you like it or not. <laughs> We don't have those kind of disciplines in the family anymore. No. We got parents who wants to be their children's friend. No. They want to be their children's friend. That's what their parents want to be. They want to be their children's friend. Okay. And you can't be your child's friend. No, no. You got to be their parent. That's right. You can't buy their love. Their love got to come from respect yes. and honor. And the only way we're going to teach our children to do that is we got to teach them the word of God. Yes. We got to show them that faith in God leads to all things possible and impossible. Yes. I'll fight to the day I die to make sure that the United States Postal Service stays alive. Amen. Amen to that. And whether we like it or not, the only people who control what happens in this country is the citizens of this country. We've gone astray like dogs. And now we've got to come back. We've got to come back. So uh, let us come back and let us build our bridges on what is good in the name of Jesus. Let us not run and get weary. And let us not walk in, in faith. But let us stay close to the glory of God. And if we got to fight, like Paul said, put on the shield of faith. Yes. That no uh, evil darts or uh, anything wicked can come at you. That's right. And, and cover your head with a helmet. Grounded in the very word that glorifies God. God. Put on the helmet of salvation. Yes. And pride your feet to go somewhere that will lead to the freedom. Peace. Exercise in Jesus that he died. He suffered. He was raised and declared that he sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Now the this season is about to be over. Amen. Uh, the writer to the book of that Old Testament, that book of prophecies, uh, says there that there's a time yes. and a season yes. for everything. Trump season's over. All right. 
Trump season's over. Now is the time for Trump to realize that he got 58 days left to keep on being a fool. But on that 61st day, that fool and his foolishness got to go. And the only way that can happen is we got to vote. We got to vote. My daddy would take his sons with him over to public school number 72. That's where him and mama would go vote every year. We'd sit out in the car and wait while him and mama went inside and voted. They came back outside and said, okay, mama to daddy, we got that done. And daddy to mama, well, I'm glad we voted. Church, be excited about voting this year. Be ready to, to vote. Be anxious to vote. Be in hope to vote. Glorify your voting right now as a sign of God speaking to you. And when we vote, they will be able to change things. Change things like police officers shooting somebody seven times or putting a knee in the neck or putting a hood over their face and suffocating or going through a woman's door and shooting her. Uh, say her name, Brianna Taylor. What's her name? Brianna Taylor. They're more worried about running the Churchill Downs today than making sure those officers pay the price for killing an innocent woman. Let us pray. Yes. Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us now into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom And the power and the glory forever and ever. Descended into hell. On the third day, he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this, he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen and amen.
in the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave thanks to the disciples, saying, Take and eat this, my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Papa was a good man. Daddy was a good man. He took care of his home. Go on, son. And my sister, we honor Daddy today. Sixth anniversary of his passing. God bless you, Paul. We know you're there in heaven. With your Lord and Savior, Jesus. And we gave you just a little bit of temptations this morning. <laughs> Even though mama would be upset, <laughs> papa's enjoying it. Amen. Let the church say amen. Hey, today, uh, before we say the Lord is blessing you right now, I want us to bless Sister Jackie Wright. She's down in Dallas, Texas with her daughter and grandchildren, and we're going to ask the Lord if he would send a blessing to our sister. I'd like for us to bless Brother Arthur Jones. May the Lord touch him and be with him and his family. For a man who helped us get this church going and sustain it to still be here, Reverend Brother Harvey Blomberg, may the Lord continue to bless you and Carol, uh, so gracious to this church and to Mary and I. And to our pastor in residence, uh, Pastor Reverend Dr. Phil Lawson, we miss you and Joanne, and we ask the Lord to bless you in your home today. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, abide, dwell, and be with you henceforth and forevermore. Go out into the world and serve the Lord with gladness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Au revoir. I'll be on tour. Sarnana.